We're now at the final unit of our study of ecology. Uh, this lesson is designed to take a big picture look of life on Earth and look at our relationship with the rest of the planet. Let's begin with a look at our impact on the biosphere. We really don't need to enumerate the many environmental problems caused by human activity. You can open a newspaper every day, any day and read about that. For a couple of million years, humans were a minor species on this planet, having very little impact overall. That's no longer true today. population of the human species has increased exponentially over the past few hundred years. And the ecological problems we've caused are not only because there's too many people, but the impact per person, particularly in developed countries, has increased dramatically. We can measure our impact with a simple tool called the ecological footprint. This is the load imposed by a given population or individual on nature. This is the amount of land necessary to sustain the resource consumption and the waste production of an individual, a family, a community, a town, a city, or a nation. Here's a basic idea. We have a limited amount of ecologically productive land that's the land that is useful for, for producing things and absorbing our wastes. Much of the planet is water, deserts, and ice caps. The footprint calculation determines how much land is required for you to produce energy, how much land do you need to create a built environment, a home, how much land do you need to create to produce enough food for yourself, and how much land do you need to produce other, far, other products. Um, to keep you alive. There are different footprint tools. Nevertheless, you could look at one of them and calculate if land was divided equally among all Americans, we would have about 14 acres of land to support our needs. The problem is the average American uses about 24 acres and many people use much more. If the entire planet were divided equally, each person would have about five acres of land to support their needs. And in fact, on average, the, re the, the, the global population uses about six acres per person. We do this because we use fossil fuels that were stored in the ground a long time ago. Another way of looking at this is over time, we see this is the amount of resources uh, humans have used. Um, and at some point, somewhere around the late 70s, we passed the amount of resources available. There's only one planet a Earth, but we use about 1.2 planet Earths uh, each year. And we call this overshoot. This is the amount of resources that are used on an annual basis um, compared to the amount available on an annual basis. We have one planet Earth, and we use quite a bit more uh, resources that are available that become available on an annual basis. We do this by digging up coal and burning fossil fuels. But don't take my word for it. Go ahead and calculate your own ecological footprint and see where you land. There are quite a few footprint tools available on the web. Um, the one that I use is that. Uh, footprintcalculator.org. Why don't you give it a try? The direct or sometimes indirect result of too many people and too many too much resources being used by individuals are hunger and poverty, Globalization and a loss of small businesses and loss of opportunity for small businesses. Of course, environmental, de environmental degradation and overconsumption of resources.
Of course, we're aware of overconsumption of energy resources, but water may be the most limiting factor on the planet in the near future. Did you know that agriculture consumes about 85% of the freshwater resources in the United States? That's a, probably a test question, by the way. We are pumping down geological water reserves in the Ogallala Aquifer, such that water wells are dropping at a rapid rate. We do this in order to produce cheap grain so we have cheap hamburgers. And of course, our lifestyles require more and more consumption of fossil fuels. I remember the rude awakening I got in college when I read a Scientific American article. They claim that in one year, humans, us, we use up the amount of fossil fuel, oil, coal, and natural gas that it took Mother Nature roughly a million years to produce. A million years to produce and one year to use. That's a non-sustainable use rate. That's a problem. We're not only using stuff up, we're then throwing it out. Accumulation of toxins and other wastes are happening at faster rates that can be processed by Mother Nature. Carbon dioxide is an example, resulting in climate change. Do you know that I heard about climate change as a possibility when I was in college, someplace sometime in the early 70s, and we're still not doing anything about it? Today, we know the cause of climate change. Climate disruption is caused by burning of fossil fuels and increased levels of carbon dioxide and methane in the, in the atmosphere. We're not adequately addressing this in any way. And of course, the world warms up. In 2006, former Vice President Al Gore made a movie called Inconvenient Truth, you know? And it was seen by a lot of people, but very, very little has changed. The bottom line is the planet is limited. There was a wonderful book published in 2005 about this called Collapse by Jared Diamond, going into the complexities of what was happening to us. It's the same story as the Lorax. And who, who would have thought we'd need to cut down the last truffle tree because everybody needs a need? Well, because there's general awareness and very little being done, I've got to ask the question, what are the root causes of this problem? Well, I begin to wonder about selfishness and greed. What do you think are the root causes? We all make choices, and we seem to have chosen to live in a world that will result inevitably in environmental destruction, social decay, and collapse. That's the plan, folks. Barbara Kingsolver wrote a lovely book called Small Wonder in about 2002. I encourage you to take a look at it. She wrote that I belong, we all belong, to the 20% of the world's population in the United States that uses 67% of the planet's resources and generates 75% of the waste. And we are the problem. Kingsolver offers the solution that our quest should be only to be thoughtful and simplify our needs step by step. Let's ask the question, what can I do? Well, I believe in simple solutions. Let's start with food. First of all, eat locally. Take your kitchen waste to a compost and make a worm compost in your kitchen or your dorm room. Recycle and reuse what you can and join a CSA. What? Yeah, a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. King Silver wrote that somewhere near you, there's a farmer who desperately needs your support, and you need their good food.
you not only get good local, generally organic food, you get to know a local farmer and a farm family. Did you know the average food item put on your plate has traveled about 1,300 miles to get there? Let's make that a test question. Average food item travels 1,300 miles before it gets to your plate. So what are you going to do about it? Well, the answer is obvious. <laughs> Let's grow a garden. And let's have animals in the garden. Here are some of my chickens in the backyard. You don't have to live on a farm to raise good food. Uh, I've raised turkeys. Here's about five turkeys in my backyard. Well, maybe that's not for you. But what can you do? Change a light bulb. Turn off the water when you brush your teeth. Return the packaging to the store. Don't waste things. Turn off the lights when you leave the room. Ride a bike. Take a walk. Think about cycles of change. And what can you do when you're a student? Well, you can demand and celebrate local foods in the dining commons. UMass has a really good job buying local. And don't take more than you eat. Avoid fast foods. And join projects like Garden Share. At UMass, we have a really cool little local garden where you can learn to grow food. Garden Share is a simple one credit course, it's no longer plant, soil, and insect science. It's called Stockbridge School 298G. And these are students that learn to grow food together. King Silver tells us to start small, do simple things step by step. Just start. Start simple by changing a light bulb. Compact, compact fluorescents or LEDs today can replace all the incandescent bulbs you have. Power down your computer before you go to bed. Make sure your coffee is certified fair trade so you know that the local farmers had a fair deal and weren't exploited. You know, hemp clothing uses far less pesticide than cotton. At my house, we try to reuse everything. Here we're reusing a plastic bag by putting it on a plastic bag dryer. dryer. Try it rather than throwing it out. One of our core ecological principles is waste equals food. That should be a bumper sticker. Waste, particularly kitchen waste, needs to be composted. Here's my first worm bin in my basement. These, these little red wiggler worms do a lot of composting for me and create great soil. The worms love it in here. Put a little newspaper on top, turn it over, and the worms will eat it up. Okay, maybe that was a little bit too big for uh, most students. But you can use the dorm room model of a flower pot. Bring your banana peels back from the DCs and feed them to your worms. Well, my wife didn't like the look of that worm being in the basement, so I got the worm condominium. Here's some worms, some red wigglers, and there's some, there's some more. Uh, you know, you put them at one level and you put the compost in the other, and they work their way up, eat, eat their well through the compost, creating great little potting soil that I can use in my garden or in plant pots. And of course, if you have a yard, you want the outdoor compost. Here's some of our leaves decomposing in the fall. Uh, we'll go out there and turn them over before the winter. And by spring, we'll have compost. I heat part of our house with wood.
We use energy efficient appliances. And of course, the most effective clothes, clothes dryer is free. Maple Line Farm in Hadley sells their milk in glass bottles that are returnable. I agree with Barbara Kingsolver that huge spirals of change, monumental change, begin with small acts. We know a lot about ecology um, and we know the effect we're having on the planet today. We've got to ask ourselves, do we really care? Well, when asked, all the surveys say, yeah, we care. We care about family, people, nature, and good food. But the fact is, we eat fast food, and we throw out the wrapper. We live in an insane world doing insane things. Lack of sanity is saying one thing, what we care about, and doing something else. When our core values are inconsistent with our daily actions, our behavior, we are no longer fully sane. Let's ask the question, who will create a sustainable future? Well, let's ask the further question, who thinks and acts in sustainable frames of time? Well, who thinks in sustainable time frame? You know, any child can think in a, in a time frame of 75 years or more. Politicians have to get reelected every two, four, six years. They can't afford to think in sustainable time frames. And what about corporate leaders, the people we like to blame? They have to show increased profitability every three months to stay in power. Even people that really care, even the best corporate leaders, have, don't have the ability to think in sustainable time frames. Well, who's that leave? Just you and me. But, 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 I'm only one person. What can one person do? What can one woman do? What can one man do? There's a lot of us. And I think you are awesome. Remember the first lesson in our unit on ecology? What if we lived our lives as if humans were a part of rather than apart from nature? What if we believed that a healthy economy was only possible within a healthy society and a healthy society only possible within a healthy environment? What if we use what we know about ecology and mother nature as a model for human behavior? What if we understood where we exist in the context of 15 billion years of evolution of the universe? What if there was another way to live? Perhaps it's not necessary to do great things Perhaps we begin with small things done with great love. Barbara Kingsolver asked us to all join in the sustainability revolution. She said that our revolution will have dancing and excellent food. Well, I think you are a miracle. And I think this planet is a miracle. And I think it's not too late.